52 week high today. The casino operator upgraded to outperform at Credit Suisse. The price target more than doubled to 68 from 33. Degas, you own it. There it is. Nice move. Woo. Exactly. Great move. And so if you look at MGM, it has a light asset model that's doing really well. Plus, it owns 50% of the rooms in Las Vegas. And also, it has a, a very a limited exposure to McLeod. And then if, on top of that, uh, basically, they're getting their, uh, they have a solar facility that provides electricity to their properties in Las Vegas. And then lastly, we have Bet MGM. That is a growth engine for MGM. So positives all the way around. We really like the stock, and it's going to continue to run. So this is a stock to hold. Okay. Do you see a lot of activity in this, Pete? I sure did. As a matter of fact, last Friday, Scott, of the unusuals, that was one of the two unusuals that we had. Actually, we ended up with three of those. But, um, yeah, MGM, they, they absolutely were buying calls, Scott, that we talked about. 8,000 of those calls, they were the November 44 calls, and the stock was trading actually closer to 45 at the time. So what, why would they do that? They were getting a little bit more leverage. Rather than buying an out-of-the-money call like we oftentimes see, this was getting a little bit more leverage. It was going to move like stock, and it's moved extremely well. Those options went from $3 to $5 since Friday's hit. And as a matter of fact, today we had even more buying. We had October 46 call buying, again, in the money calls, so aggressively positioning 5,000 of those going up uh, today as well. Those actually expire at the end of this week. So somebody looking for the stock that's already over 47 and now over 48 to continue this move in this path to the upside. I think the most important thing here is this. Las Vegas Sands and Wind, because of their exposure, are very, very, they have been, I should say, very, very toxic. And I think when you look over at MGM, you see a much different, all you've got to do is put all three onto a chart and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So as much as I've liked Wynn and Las Vegas Sands in the past, I think because of what they've got going on with Macau and everything else across the, the pond, um, that's an issue. But I think you look at MGM, they just continue to crank, and this is a company that's done really well, Degas just defined. They continue to have more and more. They just made another acquisition from the Cosmopolitan as well. So they continue to build in terms of everything that they've got in Las Vegas. Okay. Um, Steph, you must have a different opinion here than Pete does because you say you have a quote-unquote huge position in win. And you cite the fact that MGM's fine, but it's already up 50% this year. Yeah, that's just not my style to buy something up 50%. And kudos to those that own the stock, right? So I've been wrong. They've been right. But Wynn is now down 35% from its highs. It's down 20% for the year. And I know we have concerns about Macau, which is about 60% of EBITDA, 70% pre-pandemic, about 60% right now. It's worth watching the government. I do not think they're going to lose their licenses. I think the CEO on CNBC a couple of weeks ago was very up to upbeat. So was MGM about Macau, by the way. Um, and, and, and they all have been diversifying, when included. They have Boston properties. They have Las Vegas. They're online betting, sports betting, which is a $45 billion total addressable market opportunity. And they have $3.9 billion in liquidity. While we wait to figure out what happens with Macau, it trades at nine times EBITDA versus 11.5 times historical average. And so to me, that's tr I'm trying to buy low. I wish I didn't own it higher. I, but I'm actually averaging down because I do think that there is upside if you give it some time. Let me ask you what, about one more thing before we go. Uh, Steve Tuza, J.P. Morgan, <laughs> he's the number one ranked industrials <laughs> analyst. He says GE, General Electric, one of your favorite stocks, could be overvalued by 20% or more. His, uh, the target's 55. No, the target can't be 55. It's got to be a typo. What is, um, what's your comment? <laughs> yeah, they reverse split, remember? So that's probably, you have to adjust for that. Um, I, I, I don't know what else you want the CEO to do. He's restructuring I the company. About the He's shrinking split. to grow. He, I'm sorry. I forgot about yeah, yeah. the reverse split. I was like, 50, so, 55? <laughs> Tusa? <laughs> no way. Right, right. I thought it was a typo. I thought it was five. You're right. I thought it was five. Yeah, it, did, it, it, it didn't go from like 12 to 100 yeah. on fundamentals, My as bad. I, even though I would have liked that to have happened. But anyhow, so the CEO is doing everything he said he was going to do. Restructurings take a very, very long time, but he is shrinking to grow the company. He's made a bunch of asset sales. He is also building the growth businesses in aviation, in renewables, 
uh, in health care. I love the, new, the latest deal that he did in health care. Uh, he is improving free cash flow. They beat free cash flow last quarter by $500 million, and they're on track to do $5 billion this year. The stock trades on free cash flow, and if free, ca free cash flow um, is uh, doing well and surprising to the upside, you want to own this stock.